He was known as the Terminator. And just hours after we filmed with him in November of 2002, tragically, three people lay dead. This is the story of former boxing world champion, Harry Simon. In 2002, perhaps because he was from the little known and sparsely populated country of Namibia, Harry Simon hadn't been given the chance to prove himself against a big star like Felix Trinidad or Bernard Hopkins. But Harry could certainly fight. When we met up with him, he was undefeated in 23 professional bouts and was the WBO middleweight world champion. He was coached by South African Ariel Maliki, a close friend who lived with him in his hometown of Walvis Bay on Namibia's skeleton coast. Harry grew up in the toughest of circumstances here. 12 years ago, the then 30-year-old was well known for his bad boy reputation outside of the ring. Why is it now that I'm a world champion Things have to go tough with me now. You grow up the same as I grow up. People won't give you respect. They care what Harry have done. See, did Harry, was Harry in the club? Yeah, what did he do? No, he was drinking, so it's bad. Drinking is not bad. I'm not a small boy. I'm a grown up man, I can handle myself. Harry had been regularly making headlines in Namibia after nightclub brawls and run-ins with the authorities. He's my bodyguard. <laughs> he was also in a car crash 20 months prior to our visit in which two people died. Initial reports suggested that Harry was driving the car, but it had subsequently been established that an associate was at the wheel and Harry was only a passenger. However, the disappearance of blood samples taken after the crash to determine whether either of them was drunk at the time raised some suspicions in Namibia. There were allegations that a bribe had been paid to make the samples disappear. There's people driving here and people burning, whole micro buses burning and all 10, 10 15 people dying in that car. Does they put it front page? No. See, just because of this little boy. Because of what? Of because of the money I got. And because I'm a world champion. That's why they say, man, what is the only thing we can do so that we can destroy Harry Simon? What am I? Am I Jesus? I'm not Jesus. See? So people are trying to destroy me, but uh, they, won't, they, won't, they won't get it right. Harry clearly felt that people in Namibia were jealous of what he'd achieved. And by 2002, he certainly had made something of his life from what were very unpromising beginnings. The youngest of seven children, Harry never knew his father. His mother died when he was four. Growing up, Harry was closest to his sister, Anna. He sold newspapers to bring in some money, and from a young age, he got caught up in street fights. Somebody found me fighting on the street with my friend, and uh, he saw me beating up a 12-year-old, and I was like eight years old. And uh, he advised me, if I want to hit somebody for, for fun, then I have to go to the gym. The first day, he gave me to spa with the, the guy who was like 14 years old, and I was like nine years old. And uh, he was like a Namibian champion. And, uh, I beat him up in the gym, and we started from there. As a teenager, Harry found a job working in a diamond mine, but decided to give it up to pursue boxing full-time in South Africa. Life was very hard. He sometimes had to sleep in the gym because he couldn't afford a place to stay. But he was building a reputation on the tough South African boxing scene, and eventually started to earn enough money to look after his family back home. He's the best brother ever, ever, really, if we can tell the world that he is our best brother ever, he is the one. Really, he satisfies our, our lives. He is the father, he is the mother, he is the uncle of our kids. He's looking after the sister's kids and the brother's kids. He's looking about us, 
es Sister and Brothers. Home back home! Members of Anna and Harry's family still lived in the home they grew up in, expanded and improved with his money. Coming back to this township was a reminder of all he'd achieved, and for the children there, Harry was the man. I really love the kids, and uh, I feel a lot for them, because I've been like them. Every time when they came here, I have a chat with them, and I tell them uh, good stories and all that. So, yeah, I really... Uh, I really feel the way they're growing and struggling and all this. Yeah, I'm proud of them. And Harry was also proud of his escape from poverty. So proud that he even invited us into his bank to film him counting his money. This wasn't the sort of event that we usually filmed with a sportsman, but in the world he inhabited, Harry Simon was less sportsman, more celebrity. He was followed nearly everywhere by a gang of friends who acted as informal bodyguards, along with his trainer, Ariel. He grew up here and people seen him when he was a kid, I mean like when he was suffering. Today they see him driving, you know, whatever he can afford, you know. So people, they try to bring you down by the time, you know. They don't, you know, I mean like it's the only world champion ever have Namibia have produced uh, and a three times world champion. People, they don't see that. Only they see it's, um, his mistakes, you know. Basically, everybody else do mistake, you know. Unfortunately for Harry, mistakes seem to mark his path. Just before we left him, we asked him about his plans for the future. He hoped for a middleweight unification bout against Bernard Hopkins, and then win or lose to retire. But life wasn't going to turn out as smoothly as he planned. Me, I won't stop enjoying my life. I won't stop enjoying my life until death. I'm happy for who I am. I'm happy what God has given me. I'm happy to be a world champion. I'm happy to be on earth. I'm happy with my life. I'm gonna just keep going and I'm keep going strong. This was the last sequence that we filmed with Harry Simon as he posed in his new Mercedes just outside Walvis Bay. Then he left us and drove back into town. Just a few hours later, there was an accident on the same road. And Harry Simon's Mercedes was involved. Good evening, Namibia's WBO middleweight champion, Harry Simon sustained serious injuries in a head-on collision last night, which killed three people at Langstrand between Walpus Bay and Swakopmund. Simon, the Terminator, was airlifted to the Vincent Pilotti Clinic in Cape Town, where he was expected to undergo surgery on his arm and leg today. His condition has been described as stable. It was reported that Harry was overtaking another vehicle when he crashed head-on into a white Nissan carrying seven Belgian tourists. Two of them, a man and his 22-month-old daughter, died at the scene, while a woman died in hospital. The other occupants of the vehicle were seriously injured, Harry suffered a broken left arm and leg and was taken to hospital. Andrew Iamba was the regional police commander overseeing the investigation. If somebody overtook on a blind race, on a two barrier lines, he overtook and he crashed into a stationary vehicle. So you can judge yourself. It's not me to, to say no, so and so is guilty or, or what, no. But that's what happened. And they, he hit the car, no? it was head on collision. Harry Simon was convinced that the Namibian media were out to get him. And from his hospital bed, he declared his innocence, claiming that the Belgians turned across him and he couldn't avoid hitting their car. But this was a man who just couldn't seem to avoid trouble. You grow up the same as I grow up. People won't give you respect. What am I? Am I Jesus? I'm not Jesus. See? So people are trying to destroy me, but they won't get it right. In 2005, he was given a two-year jail sentence, but a lengthy appeal process saw him avoiding prison until 2007. 
Following his release, he launched a comeback and extended his professional record to 29 wins and no losses. Yet despite his undoubted talent, Harry Simon will remain known more for what he's done outside of the ring rather than in it.